Why is it hell that Christ has been raised? Why do we believe that? The reasons for the resurrection lie in two groups. Firstly, first set of reasons, there's the documented eyewitness accounts. Secondly, there's the testimony to his ongoing life. So first of all, there are these eyewitnesses and, and there are the accounts that have come down to us from them. Let's look first of all at who these people were. In 1 Corinthians, we know there were others in the Gospels, but in 1 Corinthians, Paul says here, 1 Corinthians 15, 5, before our verses, he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, and then to the twelve, that's the twelve disciples, twelve apostles. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, so you could check it out with them, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. So who were these people? Well, they were from amongst the twelve who'd lived cheek by jowl with Jesus for the last three years or so, watching his every move, hearing pretty much his every word. And familiarity normally breeds contempt. But these men went straight from being disappointed and distressed at the death of Jesus and the disaster of it all, they went straight from that to awe and worship and the laying down of their own lives for this Jesus because he'd been raised from the dead. They were the twelve. Then there were five hundred of his followers at one time and they went straight from disillusionment and despair to a determination to put their lives on the line for Jesus as well. And then there was James and then all the apostles who would actually stake their lives and die for the truth of the resurrection. All put their faith in the fact that the Jesus they knew and saw killed and saw entombed had been raised. Not all of the eyewitnesses had wanted to believe it. By no means. All of them had a mind to believe it. Paul says, finally there in verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 15, Last of all he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. Paul, Saul of Tarsus. Another who would live, then eventually stake his life on the truth of Christ's bodily resurrection and the things that Paul went through in his life. Because Jesus had been raised from the dead, he was sure of the fact that he'd seen him, and he knew him. The things that Paul went through, astonishing. Because he believed this truth. Because he'd seen and met with this Jesus. Paul, when he met with Jesus, was in no sense open to consider the claims of Christ on his life. When he was met by the risen Lord Jesus on the road, he was off to persecute the followers of Jesus, to, to put to death the people who believed in the resurrection. In fact, he'd been there for the stoning of Stephen, organising and overseeing the whole proceedings. So these guys, there were many others, but these are the ones Paul's mentioning here, were the sort of people who were the eyewitnesses of the resurrection, and they were happy to stick around and answer questions about it. 